So it's, it's definitely an honor to be here at the 100th uh, Hack Night. I'm very excited for this. It's, it's really impressive to see something so like long-lasting, like when you meet someone and they turn 25, and you're like, wow. <laughs> Let's see. So I sent a few slides over, just, just a few here. So I can't really speak to the politics or the particular routes that are in the program. But instead, I'm going to focus more specifically on the technology behind what you've been seeing, like the swoosh map, and the site in general. Because we're actually going to make this site open source. It is open source. Is it, can they find it on OpenCity yet? Or they yeah. So if you want to look at how it all, how the sausage is made, it's all as open that city transit future. Um, all the code that is here is what's running what you were saying. So yeah, it's all open source, and if you're getting this open source code, you're probably wondering what's actually in there, what am I getting? So we'll cover that. So yeah, so origin story, uh, uh, Juan Pablo and Ed uh, approached me like a month or two ago at this point uh, with this idea they had for the transit map. And from the beginning, Juan Pablo was explaining to me this idea that uh, he had seen a couple of websites. This one is the Code for America uh, annual report. And uh, he'd also seen the city of Chicago uh, open data report, where they have one long, scrolling, interactive experience. They wanted to kind of take the code from this that was open source and fork it into our own kind of story. And so some parts of that were going to be easy, just like we're using the same uh, technology, and other parts were going to be more difficult. Um, so I think on the next slide, we talk about uh, so the underlying technology is something called Jekyll. Uh, if you've done blogging before, you probably have things like WordPress or Blogger or something like that. Jekyll is in some ways similar to that, in other ways quite different. Basically, the idea is that the reason it costs money to run like a blog or a WordPress site is because each time you land on a page, the computer is thinking about how to put and paste all those elements together. With something like Jekyll, which is being created and partnering with GitHub, with something like Jekyll, what happens is you create a static site. That site that we created should look the same every time. So the computer shouldn't have to be thinking about it. Really, just every time we edit the site, we should just decide that's what everyone's going to see and ship it. Uh, so Jekyll is this framework where you make some edits. You don't have to know HTML but you're just creating some different blog posts or some different stories, and then they'll roll it out into one site. Has anyone used Jekyll before? <laughs> yeah, so we have some Jekyll users. Yeah, so this is not, I mean, I'd say it's more advanced than just going to WordPress.com, but it's less advanced than like trying to run your own WordPress server. It's and so GitHub is, I, and the title I described is a Jekyll-matic. Uh, I don't know how they're actually connected, like, organization. But I think Jekyll came out of GitHub as an open source project. So Preston Warner created who uh, yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. Okay, so thanks for doing that. But but so you know that GitHub is this library of open source code. But one thing that's kind of cool and lesser known is that when we put a website on there, one of these static, unchanging websites, uh, that it'll put it up for you in a web page, hosted for free. And when you use this Jekyll site. Even though you just send it your latest changes, and then it'll go through and do the same <coughs> kind of uh, processing. So despite all of these people, we have not paid a dime for hosting this website. And the server hasn't crashed, which maybe you would have. Well, it's a fair amount of traffic. And so what's really nice about it is because there's no fanciness going and just like say, like this is my static version of the site, it can just scale really quickly, and it's enough that they can do it free. So that's that's something we a decision we made so we could just simplify our life and make this doable. So you're hosting it on GitHub Pages, is that right? Yes. So Lars Lots is also hosting on GitHub Pages because it's free. Yeah. yeah, it's not an obvious thing, but as you get more involved in technology, like the actual storing of your site is not difficult or costly for anyone. The actual like computer thinking about each request is what's costly, and so that's. Like being removed, that's why GitHub will let us do it for free. But then it's also a tool where it makes it easier for you to write the site without like specifically doing it. Um, 